I'm Christina Heideck with PTO Answers, and today I'm going to tell you all about how to start a PTO grant program. Now, if you don't know what a grant program is, basically this is a way for teachers and your principals in your school to get funding for things that maybe you don't have a specific line item in your budget for. Like, I, there have been several times in the past where teachers have come up to me with like, they want to buy iPads for their special unit or they need, um, they want to buy, you know, ball chairs so that their kids will be less fidgety in class. Just something like that's not budgeted, but you think would really add to the school. Um, so I'm going to walk you through the whole process of how to start one because it might seem really overwhelming if, if you don't know what's involved. But once I lay out the steps, you're going to be like, man, this is no problem at all. And why didn't we do this much earlier? Because uh, the teachers are really going to love it when you do this. It'll make them feel more involved. It'll make them feel it'll make them feel more um, integral to the whole process and will want it'll motivate them to stay involved with your PTO. So the very first thing that you need to do when starting a PTO grant program is to actually announce it and make sure the teachers know what it, that it's that it's starting and that they actually can ask for money. You want to make sure that all staff know about the opportunity and that it's not just limited to the classroom teachers. The specialist, for example, might have something that they can't get funding for otherwise, and they will submit a grant if they know about it. Uh, the second thing you need to do is you need to set submission dates for the grant application. So you need to have hard and fast dates either once or twice a year. I highly suggest you doing it twice a year so that way you can have the fall dates and the spring dates because sometimes teachers don't get their stuff together and so it gives them two opportunities to submit their grant. The next thing you need to do is make sure everybody knows that there's a there's a limit in, in for the grants. So you need to look at how how much of how much money you have as a PTO to devote to this grant program per year. And it can, of course, change. Uh, in years past, we used to tie it to how much money we collected in box tops. We figured that this would be another way to get teachers to um, encourage parents to send in box tops if they knew this is increasing the pot of money that PTO has to give out for grants, right? So it was a great, like, you scratch our back with help us get earn more money and we scratch your back by giving the money right back to the school in the form of grants. So I think it's really helpful to give the staff an idea about the total amount of the pie up for grabs so that they're not submitting a $10,000 grant proposal when really maybe you only have $2,000 for the whole year. And I bet you're not going to want to give all $2,000 to one teacher or one staff member. So it just kind of levels the playing field. If they know this is what's up for grabs, most teachers know that mm, I should probably ask for an amount less than $2,000, maybe, you know, a thousand or 500 or 250 or like whatever it is, just helps like frame the possibilities for them. And, it, and it'll just be a more effective program if that information is known. The next thing you're going to want to do is actually develop an application for the grants so that you are getting the information that you will need to process as a committee in order to decide who you want to fund and who you don't want to fund. Uh, some years you might have a whole bunch of applications and there's no way that you can possibly fund them all. So you're going to have to have like some way to discern between them without basing it on a popularity contest. So the first thing you're going to want to think about is what sorts of things do your PTO want to fund? Now you don't you don't necessarily have to list those in the application, but kind of have that in the back of your mind when um, you're doing this whole thing, so that you are funding what you actually want to fund, and you're not funding things that don't interest you, or like I said, or think that or that you think that the school should be paying for. Um, Back when I started um, an official grant program at the elementary school, uh, I made it pretty short and sweet because teachers are busy and we just didn't need like a whole big old like long essay to accompany the application because that just meant we had to read through all of them. And it just wasn't necessary when we're talking about our, I think our pot of money was like $5,000 or less. So we were sometimes splitting it seven different ways Again, it doesn't need to be that involved because it's not like a huge, huge amount of money. 
Teachers are used to writing grant proposals for sometimes tens of thousands of dollars. So there, of course, that's gonna be a more extensive application process. You want to make sure that staff are including in their application, like how much money is being requested? How many students will this touch? Is this a subscription that, is this a subscription service that they're, that they're buying or is it a one time deal where no other money will be needed in the future? You should also ask for an overall cost estimate for whatever they're buying. So a lot of times, um, what, especially when we were splitting money a couple different ways, we there would be some that we were really enthusiastic about funding, so we'd fully fund those, and then we would maybe only be able to partially fund a uh, a grant. And a lot of teachers and staff members are happy for whatever they can get, so you can always partially fund it and say, we'll fund, we'll give you, you know, let's say they ask for $500 and you only have 300 and you'll say, we'll give you 300. Can you get the 200 from somewhere else? A lot of times the school will step in or the staff member will say, yeah, I can tap on another source and then they'll get fully funded with the multiple sources, but it'll, it'll all work out. So that way it's like a win-win for everybody. After you've let everybody know what should be included in the application, then you wanna go ahead and form a committee because you don't wanna have just like one person reviewing all of the applications because everyone's gonna have a different, different opinion, of course. So you're gonna to wanna to have a committee to review all of the applications and then decide. Usually I find the best way to do this is to have everyone review the applications independently and have them rank them. And then sometimes another meeting isn't needed because it just, again, it depends on how big the pot of money to um, give out as grants is and how many submissions you have. Then the last step is to actually give the results. And so you're gonna be, once your committee has like decided on what they're gonna fund and what they're not gonna fund, you as the chair of the committee should be notifying all of the applicants. And I will tell you, I absolutely loved telling staff members when we were funding them, a lot of times they were so happy they started crying. And it just really touched me because I knew what what a difference this money was making and that it really, it what we were doing is making a huge difference. And it was being so appreciated. If there's a situation when you can't fund them, then you might wanna say, here's the missing, here's the information that we needed but didn't get and here's the next submission date so that let them know that they can try again because sometimes there's just not enough money to go around and all staff members understand that and know that so there you go that is how to start and run a pto grant committee for your school if you're looking for even more detailed information on this as well as a more in-depth look at what the application should look at, go ahead and check out the companion blog post that I have for this video. I've linked to it in the description so you can check it out there. And again, if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and subscribe or like my page so you can keep seeing all the great information that I'm sharing with you.